the Yamaha 225DX is still torn apart. The parts are still in the mail, you guys. Before we bring in our next victim, I kind of wanted to tell you a little bit about this. Uh, one question or concern I'm seeing so far, and granted, I haven't looked at this thing thoroughly, but it looks like it has like an eyeglass or something back here where usually you'd fill the rear differential. I've already drained it, and what came out of that was this over here. It looks like an ATF, so I'm not sure if you're supposed to run ATF. Usually I use uh, gear oil in these things, but maybe the older things wanted ATF. I don't know, so if you have any uh, knowledge on that, if you could leave that in the comment section, um, I'd really appreciate that. I also uh, fixed this thing. We were at 66%, and we actually weren't even at the full 66% because this tack uh, broke. This is for the headlight assembly. Um, that was actually broken, so we were at probably probably about 50%, so I welded that on, so now this is strong, but I also welded that other one on, so we're up to 100% yet again. So the Yamaha is going to have perfect headlightage. So other than that, parts are in the mail, some miscellaneous uh, pieces are missing, or uh, hardware is missing, which isn't a big deal. So once that stuff comes in, we will wrap this project up. But now it is time for our next victim. If anybody plays the New York Lottery, 3136, we have that ticket. Let me know if it's a winner. If not, it's going to sit in my garbage. So we got the Yerf Dog. What? Why the hell? What kind of name is that? Well, whatever. Let's uh, check this thing out. I remember I purchased this thing. I think they were asking... 150 I think I paid somewhere I, I usually pay under that I'm not exactly sure what I paid but that tires and that tires brand new it still has the little little bumps on it this guy on the other hand kind of wore out that guy isn't bad so far we're rocking two different treads then back here is a different tread and that's completely that's bald. I mean, it's got the same thing going on as that one. I don't know which one's, I think this one's in worse shape, but they actually did give me a tire. So whatever tire, I don't know if they're all the same size or whatever, but still it came with a tire. So that was kind of cool. It's a two seater. I liked that. Granted, you know, this isn't really uh, up to what I'm used to. I'm used to, or what I like at least, I like a lot more power. This is something I think we'll just uh, fix, ride it a couple times, and then get rid of it. I did sell my other go-kart, so it might see the exact same journey as that one. Wow, the exact same engine as the last one. Power Sport by Tecumseh. Same exact setup, same exact carburetor, exact, exact same thing. This one's in better shape, though. Our last uh, muffler cover was rusted out this one's good hot surface i didn't know a gas tank can really get that hot but whatever you know you need your your legal stuff it still has the padding and stuff i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing uh seats in good shape wow both victim and driver have a seat belt but you're not just sharing one. I don't know where they buckle into. I don't see that. Are they 
behind there? Okay, there's one hanging there, and there's... Wow, it's even got both seatbelts. This thing is in good shape. I think we might have a go-kart in an hour or two. So I'm going to fill up the tires the way nobody should fill up tires and do not do what I'm doing because this is silly. But, uh, yep, <laughs> going to use this. If you don't know where I'm going with this, then you definitely should should not be doing what I'm doing. Not even sure if this is even seated decently for this to even work, but... Gonna have to try the other approach here. Really good old handy dandy ratchet strap. I managed to get this guy on with the carb cleaner and my torch. This guy, I actually threw a battery in here to widen this out. So hopefully it'll kind of form to a wider thing. I, I tried it for like 30 minutes, you guys, throwing fire at it, different, uh, you know, gas and carburetor cleaner and everything else. Uh, now I'm, I just didn't show you guys that because I was very, very disappointed. <clears throat> Gonna replace this tire, but before I can get this uh, rim assembly off, I guess I think I have to take the chain off. So we got a couple brackets or two bolts here that hang this chain cover on. one Chain, rusty crusty, not so sweet, but it still semi functions. This is gonna be, wow. Oh. Then I'm gonna come off like that. Who's got faith in the Bosch 12 volt to take this off? I think it's got it. Like nothing. <laughs> Looks like it also has a clip on it as well. They, they went all out on safety, man. You had to really screw something up to get that clutch to come off. You'd have to take that. You'd have to sm smash into that, have that loosen up on you, and somehow get this guy to come off before you had any chain problems. Safety squints engaged. If I pull them both out, it shouldn't come off, right? Or not. I guess I could take the chain off that way. I know the clutch isn't seized.
Oh okay, god, it fell. Uh oh. Let's see if it'll come undone. Wow. I'm gonna have to move it. Maybe get a hammer or something involved. This guy right here. I got my punch screwdriver. This thing shot, so I used it as a punch. A little bit of movement. It should be enough. This thing's tight. I guess I'm loosening up the engine. That's how you tighten this thing. Guess I'm loosening that up. Sorry about that. Wrench is getting out of control. Now we have loose chain. Now everything moves easier. This should slide off now. That would have made it easier to do right off the beginning, but hey, you know, you gotta struggle sometimes. Like it's not bound. Okay, that side is definitely bound up, but this side isn't. I don't know if I have this chain or not. Hmm. It looks like I need a new band. There's a brake pad up here. And then it stops right about there. It's very gradual, but it does stop. And then this is just metal on metal. So, probably need to replace that. And may as well buy a chain while I'm at it. That chain is shot! I don't think I showed you guys this, but it does pull over. I wouldn't be messing with the tires if it didn't pull over. Usually, you know, as soon as that's the first thing you do, you pull it. If it's got some compression behind it, it's usually just the carburetor. And then if it doesn't have compression, you're either seating valves or you're you're knocking a valve that's stuck loose. It's usually nothing too out of the ordinary once you have the compression. And then if you do have compression and you fix the carburetor. If it doesn't have spark, you get a bad coil, or sometimes the wire short out or break off, and then kind of like the three-wheeler just doesn't spark because of a silly situation. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and move this guy over. And I'll change the oil because I do remember, like I said, I bought this a few months ago or a few weeks ago, whatever it is, and the oil in it was really bad. And I do remember from the last go-kart, and that was a 7.16, 12-point, so that made that really easy to get to. It's not super black, it's got a little bit of a uh, yellowy tinge to it, but it's definitely not good oil. I wonder if I can set this down, it's really too much stuff up. What do you guys think? Spark or no spark? I'm 
gonna go ahead and say spark. I think what killed this guy was probably a flat tire. I bet you, I mean, they were a sucker to put on. So I bet you the tire went flat one day and they just didn't want to get it on or whatever. And then it just kind of sat. gap on this plug. Look at that finger. See what an infected freaking... That's why when your mom says put ne Neosporin on it, you put Neosporin on it. That gap it looks a little big to me. I'm going to shrink that up on the old concrete. There we go. That looks better. I just tapped the end on the concrete. We'll see if she goes. So the engine has a kill switch and that is on. I don't see any on switch on the driver here. I do, actually yes there is. So here, we flick that switch, flick that switch, see what we got. I think I see something. Yeah, I see something. We got spark. Sweet. So the engine has a kill switch and that is on. I don't see any on switch on the driver here. I do, actually yes there is. So here, we flick that switch, flick that switch, see what we got. I think I see something. Yeah, I see something. We got spark. So I think I actually have another plug that would fit this thing, but I'm gonna see if it'll run with this one and how well it will run on this one. So we got spark, we have compression. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mess with the carburetor. And then by then, hopefully, the oil will be done draining. We'll be able to pull on this thing and see what it does. Wow. That air filter isn't that bad. That's a decent air filter right there. That one's coming off easy. This one seems to be in better shape. Yeah, one last one right here. There we go. See if there's any missing springs on this guy. So we pull it here, pull it here, and it feels like it's returning correctly, so that's good. And then I'm looking here at the throttle, and you guys can probably see that as well. Throttle moves, so sweet. No broken linkages. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So now what do we got? Taking a Phillips end on it. Yeah, I'll we'll just take those two mounts off. It's probably going to be a 10 mil. Oh, great. I have to say, I love these nuts. These nuts right here. Love those guys. Don't even need a wrench on the other side with them. This guy. Ooh, we got a silly design, ladies and gentlemen. A silly design. We take this socket here. This is what I was using on the other side. We stab that onto that bolt. It's a no-go. 
So the engineers were looking out for us mechanics. That's for sure. So now we we'll have to put you guys down, take two hands onto the screwdriver here, and just give her one hell of a go. Oh, that wasn't too bad at all. There's that guy, and now our linkage. I'm not sure if that's gonna be easier to take it off like that, or whatever. You guys probably got a better view than I got. There's that. Now just the fuel line. Right. That was the fuel line. Nothing's coming out of it. So we might have carburetor issues for it to be that clean. I'll run some gas through it real quick. Oh man, we're shooting it. Fuel lines clear through. Look at I got gas everywhere. We have a huge fire hazard right now. Nobody light up. What do you think you guys? Bad needle on seat. What do we got going on there? I see a, some slight damage on the bowl. Hopefully it holds fluid. If not, I probably have this exact carb laying around. Without any hesitations, let's see what's going on here. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to take this little plastic cover off. And then that gives you access to this jet right here. Comes out just like that, and then I showed you guys that, that scar there. I am concerned about that. I don't really want to replace a bowl. I think I have one, but wow, that guy is on there. <laughs> See how that varnish come off? Wow, you guys. You guys saw the last carb on that on the Yamaha. This one looks like it's going to be maybe worse. I mean, look at that jet, how dusty and dirty that is. You're not getting very much power at all out of that. So I'm not I'm gonna go with uh, the flat tire didn't stop it. Wow. Wow. Look at all that stuff. Like, look at that. It's look at that. Holy crap! How does the oh, okay, yeah, the float sits relatively nice. Let me bring you up like this, a little bit more level. You can see the float sits at a good spot there. But yeah, all that crap is gonna screw up your needle and seat, so that's going to cause the machine not to retain fuel. It's just gonna leak out of itself. And then you got people like me who are gonna pick it up and fix her up and have a good time. <clears throat> okay. That pen didn't come out too difficult. 
the needle yeah it has a ring around it so yeah that's not going to seal anything and then i mean this plug has a little bit of debris on it i was expecting it to be a little bit more rusty but that's fine and then uh yeah i don't even bother taking this thing off this gas this uh, gasket here nothing really else comes off of these things the ultrasonic cleaner does a damn good job so I'm just going to throw it in like that and just let it do the work for me. That's crazy. Now, before I put that stuff in, I'll give you guys a sneak peek on what this carburetor is going to look like on the Yamaha. This is, just, this is just coming out now. It doesn't look bad at all. It's been in there for... I want to say four hours you can see it's kind of got like a weird marble texture to it it's eating some stuff up and left some stuff behind that that uh seat is definitely different color definitely did something to that same with this definitely changed the color on that but i'm gonna spray all this down with carb cleaner and then uh Put it off to the side because otherwise the stuff dries up and then it we're just back to square one what i'll do is I'll just put all this stuff right on here so that way it can't really fall off it's got an edge to get caught on that guy doesn't have to go in there that's gonna float around i'm not gonna lose that I'm not gonna lose that so i'll go on the other side just like that start your engines I need to add a little bit more fluid to that. I used soap. So far we have to order this thing. That's the braking mechanism and a chain. I'm gonna see what it looks like without all this foam crap on it. I'm not a fan of safety when it comes to go-karting or anything power sports. I'm in here! Cole's here. Let's see what she looks like. I gotta use the bathroom up right here. I gotta run to the window. Okay, sounds good, buddy. Anybody uh, TMI? Thanks for uh, thanks for coming in, Cole, and lightening the mood. That's all. What do you guys think? Will it look better before or after? Oh man, we got brand new metal now. I don't think you can beat brand new metal. Safety doesn't have anything on brand new metal. Yep, I think I like that better. What do you guys think? It's gone through its first round of a 30 minute increment. We're three minutes after the second one here. You can see, I just literally flipped this. You can see how how shiny that float is now. It's not that bad right now on this side, but that's shiny. Now I'll we'll just keep that, nope, other side. There we go. Let's do its job. We'll keep putting this thing back together. I'm going to put the plug back in it. We're going to tackle that tire.
Tires, tires, tires. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of tires. I'm really good at popping the tubes, I will tell you that. If you need your tube ever popped, come on by. I'll go ahead and pop it for you. Suckers, I still have the other one. The other one's still not on the rim. This tire is fitting this rim a lot better, but still, the CFM of this thing is, is next to nothing, so it literally can't fill anything up on its own. And I have a 60 gallon air compressor, it's just not here. Maybe this will do it. filter really isn't bad it's just got a little bit of debris on the ends here so I'm just gonna spray it down and just wipe that stuff off and blow it out with the air compressor
this out you guys this is the next day coming into the garage it's currently 35 degrees in here and there's quite a bit of snow right there it's seeping through my door and the funny thing is, is i've spray foamed it as you can see and i also have uh one of the things on the outside to seal it so like a, a weather strip or whatever but it's still coming in so i think what i'll have to do eventually is scrape all that spray foam off and just continue the the board and have a nice tight seal because we don't need my my welder getting snow on it melting what better time for an update we got the ambulance going we got the perfect degree in here we have a blown up air compressor yes we have a blown up air compressor the husky toughest name of tools after i think probably about 10 years of owning this my grandfather gave it to me before he moved down to florida um it won't go over 20 psi this is a luber uh lube system so you can't put oil in it uh i don't know if i can rebuild this or not if you guys have any information about that like whether it's easy or not or if there are some videos out there what it costs stuff like that i'd really appreciate that also while the ultrasonic cleaner is continuing to do its job this thing is really interesting this is the air box now this little piece of plastic actually informs you whether to put it in this position here which is w i'm assuming for winter and then you have this position here which is for summer which is really crazy i've never seen that so we're in the winter stages so i'm going to put that right there also i took the took this out while you guys weren't looking and check this out look at how clean that bowl is but can you see the problem we have a chunk missing out of it so i was concerned about this scratch here and we really have a hole right here but the cool thing is is fate would have it I have the exact same carburetor right there. A similar carburetor. That one's in really good shape. Check out the bowl on this guy. Brand freaking new. Brand new. Gotta love when things fall into place. So I'm, I'm just gonna stab this guy on there for now just to protect the float and stuff. So if we ever have to harvest more stuff off of it, we can. And actually, I'll put the gasket with it. Hopefully our, well actually, you know what? Let's see something. Is that jet better than, i try to feel around for it. Oh man. No, I'm gonna say that this jet's gonna be better once I spray carb cleaner through it. So yeah, we'll just reassemble this so that we can take our donor carb and keep it a little bit more together. So this is what my ultrasonic cleaner did. It looks really good, extremely good, brand new even. So now we'll go ahead, rebuild it. I already sprayed it out with carb cleaner. I didn't show that because, you know, it's you just squirt carb cleaner everywhere and you blow out everything. I'm hoping that this uh, needle and seat will work. Before there was just like a, a dust ring around it. There's not like an actual debris ring. You can see that that's sitting slightly high. Push it down a little bit. Yeah, it should sit about level. That's looking better. Spray that. That jet out, that screw out. I don't even bother putting that plastic uh, cover back on these things. The thing I took off in the prior, that covers the screw. I don't put them on, they don't. It's not like it needs to protect anything. And then this guy, where is it? Here we go. And I did wipe off the uh, black gasket there. So sweet, we got a, a new bowl. I'm, I'm super happy that I had that in stock. There we go. Do the old shake test. I can hear the float moving. Let's fire it on. Reverse order. I'm gonna put the fuel line on first. Actually, 
actually. I should have. I should have honestly put the linkage on first. Where did our linkage go? We have a missing linkage. Got the first screw started because that one's always the. It, you need that. I think we might be able to get this uh, 100 or $120, $150 go-kart going in I think about 45 minutes here worth of YouTube time. Uh, so we have that hooked up, we have that hooked up. Before I put the air filter cover on, I'm going to go ahead and put gas in it. And of course it's a safety one, so you need three hands for this operation. Last bit of gas too. Man, everything's just running on luck today. That's all the gas I got. Half a tank. Hey, if I were a kid and I had this go-kart, tell you what, half a tank sounds like two hours of fun to me. Maybe an hour. You know, stuff can get pretty braptastic here. So I'm gonna leave that off. Air filter cover I'm gonna leave off. I'm gonna stick my head in here and see if yeah. I don't see anything coming out of the Let me priming it. I don't see nothing coming out of the primer. Hmm. No prime for a good time, I guess. At least with the primer bulb. But we, what we will do is we'll use our two-stroke gas bottle for now. And sometimes, believe it or not, when you run it for a little bit, that primer bulb will actually like fix itself. So let's see if it'll run. On, I think that is on. Are we ready to rock and roll? Oh yeah, and there is oil in it. Kind of felt like the flywheel key was bad it kicked back a little bit so let's see if we'll stay running uh, we have a mouse nest or something in there but it does run sweet it will fire which is awesome we're gonna stop this 3d machines production here we'll get to the mouse nest and hopefully get this thing all back together on the next 3d machines production there you go that's how you get your $100 go kart off Craigslist Marketplace, let go, whatever app you want to use uh, in, you know, about 45 minutes. I, I'm looking forward to maybe taking a victim on here. Maybe my brother will go. Uh, my plug at the end of the video, uh, right now until Christmas, we're running the special. Uh, spend 25 bucks at machinemerch.com or 3dmachines.co. Get a free $10 beanie. Keep your head warm this winter when you spend $25 before shipping. We have a mouse nest to take care of, okay. Well, hopefully it, um, hopefully the, the engine's not too in too bad a shape. Hopefully nothing scored or anything, but find out on the next 3D Machines production. Take care, you guys. We'll see you soon.